I'm not exactly sure what to make of this. Um, the earlier class had just the reverse. They had 60% with C and about 40% with B. Um, so before we get to an answer, let's think about the problem a little bit. Because if you take it step by step, you can probably straighten out in your own mind what the answer is and why. Um, bunch of heads, bunch of tails. I grab a coin at random. What's the probability? What's the chance that I'll grab heads? 80%. 0.8 of the time. A fraction of the time is 80% that I grab heads. 20% I grab tails. If I grab heads, out of that 80%, what's the chances that it's still heads? 40%? Half of that. 0 0.4 that I grab, grab a heads, flip it, get another heads. 80% chance that I grabbed heads, where's the rest of that 80%? Since 40% when it, when it get heads, where's the other 40%? Well, the coin I grab, when I grab heads and flip it, it could come up tails. And that's equally likely. Could be heads, could be tails. That's tails. What if I, what should I do here? Let's do heads again. I, what if, 20% chance I grab tails. How much of that goes into heads? Half of it. Half of it goes into tails. So you can straighten those out, but then in the end there's a question that I asked and, and so you have to figure out where you are. If I grabbed heads and I still have heads, how many heads is that? Still 80. Because it didn't change. If I grabbed heads and I flipped it and became tails, so now I've lost one heads, what's... How many heads? 79. If I grabbed a tails and flipped it and got heads, so I've changed the number of heads, I've increased it by one, then 81 heads is what I have left because I've taken tails and gotten heads out of it. And if I take tails and I leave it, it, I flip it and it's still tails, then I haven't changed the number of heads or the number of tails. Forty percent of the time I get 79 heads. Ten percent of the time, 81 heads. What's the right answer? B. Why do you pick C? Because you know that the coin is even. So it sounds like it's 50-50. And I mean, you're right that something is 50-50. But, but not these two things. Why not? Because we're sitting there with 80 heads. We are more likely to pick heads. Because we're more likely to grab heads, it's more likely that it's going to change toward fewer heads than toward more heads. It's just because of the situation we set up. It's because this is not a this is not a state where I grab a hundred coins and throw it on the ground. Of course it is one of those states, but it's not a likely one. I could grab a bunch of coins and throw them on the ground and find 80 heads and 20 tails. That, that would be not very likely. It's not as unlikely as me winning the lottery, which is, which is you might as well say that that's not going to happen. In fact, it's not going to happen for any of you either, but okay. Um, it's just statistical. Maybe it will. Uh, but I would bet that it wouldn't. Um, so, four times is more likely that you move toward what you would call the most likely situation. The 
most likely situation is if I throw 100 coins on the ground is, is, a, is 50 up and 50 down. 51 up, 49 down, that's not so bad. 80 up, 20 down, not very likely. If I start with eight, if I start out of equilibrium and I start grabbing coins at random and flipping them, I could move away from equilibrium. I could go to 81 heads, but much more likely toward equilibrium. It's much more likely that I'll go toward equilibrium than away from equilibrium. Four times as likely, in fact, with the first coin flip. I'm not going to ask you to answer this one, but I will throw the question up there. What if I don't flip one coin, but I flip five coins? Grab them randomly and flip five. If I were just comparing these two probabilities, the probability that I would suddenly have 85 coins and the probability that I would suddenly have 75 after doing that, much, much more likely that I'll have 75 than that I'll have 85. Something like 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, however many times I flip it. Something like that. It's less than that because as I get closer to equilibrium, that number 4 gets smaller. But it's, it's much, much more likely, 100 times more likely that I'll end up with 75 that I will have taken five steps one way than that I will have taken five steps away from equilibrium. And, I mean, we could, we could keep figuring out where we are and put a branch out there and calculate that if we wanted to. I, I don't want you to do that, but it's not hard to just keep going in this way and figure that kind of number out. Well, this is all about coin flipping. Now, coin flipping is, is about statistical issues and it, you know, it's about what's likely and what isn't, but it doesn't quite feel like thermodynamics. It doesn't feel as real as it could, so let's try to make it real. Suppose you're in a room separated by two parts, separated into two parts by a wall. There's a wall in the center here with a tiny little hole in it. One side of, has arsine gas, a horrible poison gas, arsenic hydride, um, at 0.01 parts per million, so pretty low concentration arsine gas here. Most of you here are not in too bad a shape. On the other side, uh, arsine gas at 100 parts per million, so 10,000 times more. All right, I apologize uh, because, because those of you on this side are in trouble. Um, b because that, it, it's, arsine gas kills you in, apparently, I look up and I find out it kills you by, by uh, messing up your blood cells. Um, so, so what's, what do I want to ask you? Well, an arsine molecule floats around here and every, it gets knocked around and every once in a while it finds itself at that hole. If it finds it, if a molecule shows up exactly at the hole in the wall, what's going on? Well, it's just sitting there and all the molecules on both sides the, in the air are hitting it. Bunch of, the air on this side is one atmosphere, the air on this side is one atmosphere. Tons of molecules slamming into it from both sides. The end result is it'll either go one way or the other. The, ran, the way it decides which way it'll go is just how it happened to have been hit when it got there. If it's hit more on one side than the other, then it'll go that way. If it's hit more on this side, then it'll go this way. And it is essentially, as far as we can tell, exactly random which way it will go. There's no reason to think that arsine molecule is going to go this way or that way. It's just getting bounced around and so it could go either way when it finds itself there. So. My question for you, if you're in the side of the room with 0.01 parts per million, uh, it won't kill you. Is the hole in the wall a problem? So the 
question is, are we talking about an immediate effect? I, I guess what I would say when I ask you if the hole in the wall is a problem, I'm asking you, do you want to leave this side of the room? Do you want to go outside or are you willing to sit here and wait it out and, and find out if the hole is a problem? <laughs> If you want to leave the room, I'd call the whole a problem.